welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today I am going to talk to you about putting infusible ink on a ceramic tile. Not a ceramic coaster, a ceramic tile. Kind of the same thing, but a bit different for a few reasons. One, it's not a Cricut product. So it's not the Cricut ceramic tiles that you can use for um, infusible ink. It is just a ceramic tile. You know the ones that you put on your backsplash in your bathroom or your kitchen? Yeah, one of those. I'll show you. So I was at the, I don't know, giant home store. <laughs> I was at Lowe's and we were looking at backsplashes. This was a while ago and I kept looking at these ones and I'm like, man, you know, I bet I can use some iron on vinyl or some regular vinyl on those. And then I started playing with the infusible ink and I realized that the ceramic coasters are just ceramic tile with the backing on it. So I had an idea and then this idea kind of exploded with my feed on everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, of everyone making these ceramic tiles as Christmas ornaments. And I thought, I bet infusible ink would work on those. So let's give it a try. We're gonna do that today. I'm going to try to use fingers crossed that it works because it's going to be really cool if it does, infusible ink on a ceramic tile. And I'll show you, let's show you what those look like. So this is what it looks like when you pick it up from the store. It's just a sheet of ceramic tiles. And what you would normally do is put this on your wall and put grout in between each one. That's not what I'm doing. I... I'm going to take one and put some infusible ink on it. I wanted to start off with something small because I didn't want to overdo it and it end up being like a big fail. So I just did the letter L for my initial, for my last name as a monogram. Um, so what I did to prep this was I, um, I actually didn't clean it at all yet. <laughs> I just had it on there because I didn't want to lose it. So what I did was I took the backing off because there was like a, net, a mesh netting on the back and that's just to hold it together so that you can put it onto the wall. Um, I took that off because it's going to be under a high, high heat and I did not want to melt that on my press because that would be really bad. I don't know the material of the netting mesh stuff, so I just pulled it off. Um, it wasn't too hard at all. It was actually very easy to pull off. Um, but I will be putting like a piece of paper or something on the bottom of the press when I press it so that the glue, if there is any glue, it doesn't go onto my press. Next, I'm going to get a paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and clean off the top of, excuse me, the top of this. And then we will let it dry. The reason why we are using rubbing alcohol, rubbing alcohol is because it takes off any residue, any oils, um, sticky stuff, anything that may be on here that might hinder your transfer of the infusible ink. You wanna make sure that you get it nice, good and clean and then let it dry. Give it a good dry. And then you also wanna make sure that there's no fuzzies on here, none, no fuzzies at all. So next, I have my heat press preheated all the way up to 400 degrees. So I'm just gonna move this over here real quick. Take a piece of card stock. It can be whatever kind of paper, it doesn't have to be card stock. But I'm just gonna set this down right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my decal on my coast on my tile here, just the way that I want it. Ah. There we go. So I've got it kind of centered, and you can use if this if this mask isn't sticky enough for you, you can use some. Um, heat resistant tape, but it's pretty good for me. It's pretty sticky. Um, 
Just making sure that that's where I want it. And I think it looks pretty good. So I've got it like this. And now I'm gonna place it onto the press like so. And then I'm going to take a sheet of butcher paper put it over this so that it traps any gases or anything along those lines. So then we're gonna put that on here like so. And then I'm going to adjust my press here because I don't want it to be as low of a setting as I did for shirts. I probably should have done this first, but that's okay. We will adjust if needed. All right, so hopefully that's good. There we go. All right, press is heated to 400, I believe. It doesn't really tell me if it is or not. All right, yeah, it is. They're all red and ready to go. So we're going to press down. There we go, yay, it was fine. <laughs> All right, and then we are going to, it didn't, there we go. Let's say my timer didn't start. It usually just starts when you lock it, but it didn't that time. So if you got it set for 30 seconds, um, I'm gonna let it do the whole 30 seconds. Why not? It's gonna be very, 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 very hot when it's done so you're just going to leave it when you walk away or when it's when the timer goes off or the timer is done um my press is not heated at all what's going on here Technical difficulties, guys. Bear with me. Alrighty. Not sure why it was not heated before or preheated because I did have it turned on and I thought that it was going, but it wasn't. Um, I'm still learning this new press, so bear with me. In the meantime, while it's heating, for real this time, I double checked. <laughs> It's up at 286, so it's moving this time. It's not at 200. I'm going to talk to you really quick about infusible ink transfer sheets. There's a couple of things that you really want to keep in mind. One of them I learned for real today. So the infusible ink transfer sheets are like a paper material. So when you think about your designs and what you want to do with them, really, really try to avoid any skinny or thin thin scripted lines or details. Reason being is this happens when you have super fine details. So I tried to do a script of my full last name and most of the letters were okay as you can see but some of them, I'll try to pull off some of it here for you. I can't use it because it, <laughs> it didn't work very well. Um, like the U here on the other side is really, really super duper thin. And I'm actually surprised that it was able to come off. But you can see right here, that little U, I don't know, the light might be screwing it up. There we go, right there. See where the U hits? It's so skinny that it didn't, it was so thin that it didn't cut off properly. So it wouldn't look right if I tried to transfer it. Now the biggest issue, was while that one came off, this part of the D here, this is all sorts of messy. This is me stalling. But see <clears throat> where the D goes into the O, the o I can't even spell my own last name. It's so thin that the ink actually isn't on there. It's just white so it didn't work at all. And then the same with this top part of the D, how it swooshes around. It's not even on there. It's like way over here. <laughs> Let's see if I can move the my finger so that you can see a little better. There we go. See how it's got the fray looking D. 
Also, just a thought, food for thought, don't use infusible ink for, or at least the transfer sheets for thin um, scripted wording or details. I, you could use the infusible ink markers for details like this. So instead of cutting it, use the draw feature. Um, I don't have any of the pens to show you that with right now. I'm still working on getting my hands on them. Every time I go to get the ones that I want, they are sold out every single time. So pens for little scripts and details like this. All right, let's see where we're at. 350, we're almost there. So if you're curious on how the first steps of this process look like the what goes on in design space, go ahead and watch my other video, Infusible Ink Transfer Intro. Um, that will help a lot with that part and showing you kind of the details on weeding the um, infusible ink sheets and stuff like that as well. It is a little bit different than weeding regular iron on or vinyl. So make sure that you watch that. And if you have subscribed to my channel, you have access to all of those videos. Well, even if you haven't subscribed, you definitely should. That way you always have access and you don't have to go digging and searching and just go to your subscribe channels and I'm right there. And I'm always creating new content for you guys. So help me help you tell me what you want to see see where this is at but speaking of C, <clears throat> super close i have lots of ideas in store for you guys i've done a lot of videos and i'm kind of i know what i want to do for my next few videos but then after that I've done so much. I'm running out of ideas. Tell me what I can help you with. Drop a comment. What are you struggling with in your cricket crafting world or just in your crafting world in general? It does not have to be cricket specific. It can be anything. What type of craft or hobby related thing are you struggling with? How can I help you? What do you want to see me do or fail at or even attempt for you so that you don't have to try it? Let me do it for you. So subscribe, like, all of that good stuff so that you can see me in the future too. Let's see where we're at. 383, we are getting there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and prep my space while we wait. Again, <clears throat> putting construction or even just a plain sheet of paper, cardstock, whatever you got on hand will work. <clears throat> Remember, this is just to take off any so instead of if there was glue left on the back of the ceramic tile it's going to go on this piece of paper not on my press mat put this down right in the center layer and then get the butcher paper ready put that right on top there all right now remember, if you lost any adhesion from your mask, you can use heat resistant tape to make sure that your decal is stuck on there. You don't want the transfer sheet to slide around at all. It will create a lot of weird imaging, um, which I'll talk to you in just a second about. All right, we are at 400, well, 402, but 400. So we are going to press it down. Boop. And now it's set at 30 seconds. We'll give it about 20 seconds. I don't want to do the full 30. I feel like that that is uh, a bit too much. But we shall see. <laughs> and there we go. Now we are going to lift and walk away. Not going to touch it until it's cooled off. So, what did I say I was going to talk to you about? <laughs> I forgot already. The butcher paper, what that does is it absorbs any gases that may be released from the um, infusible ink sheets. So when you press it, the ink from the sh transfer sheet, it's... I still don't know the full process of how it sticks on there, but it basically like melts into the surface. Well, that's what it's supposed to do anyway. <laughs> so the heat from your press conducts into that ink and the ink just kind of seeps onto your surface 
and then your surface absorbs it and that's how you get your image so um if you do have any flakes of this is a perfect example flakes of um the ink anywhere on your uh oh my goodness your blank it's gonna show up that's what these are that's what all of these little things here are really like great right here and here and all up here i didn't have the transfer sheet clean enough and i didn't know that that would happen and these little boogers these little tiny pieces are really hard to see if you're not looking for them so make sure that when you transfer that you don't have any excess little pieces of ink or transfer paper laying around this was a bust but it's still kind of cool i'm still gonna give it to grandpa all right because that was a tile it's probably still really really hot but i'm gonna go ahead and lift my butcher paper at least and then take this piece of paper see piece of paper was a great idea and move it right on over here so that it can cool a little faster this stays hot for a while this mat um, and then having it under the heat makes it stay hot. So as soon as I move it over, it starts to cool. Oh, it's not too bad. It's still pretty hot, but it's not terrible. Now, when you go to lift off your decal, you want to make sure that you really lift it off. And I just noticed something that I did um, that I did not pay too much attention to when I put this on here. So this, it's still pretty hot. This um, tile has a curve on the edges here and you can see right here where it has that curve. And my decal is a little bit over the curve right there and on the other side. So I don't know if it transferred onto those. I don't even know if it transferred at all. I can't tell. It's very hard to see, so. Let's hope it worked and this wasn't a total waste of time. It wouldn't have been a total waste of time regardless because I taught you guys or did not teach you guys that you can or cannot do something with infusible ink. So I am just going to slowly pull up the mask. And Houston, we have a problem because this came off, <laughs> but the backing to the infusible ink did not. So we are going to use a pair of tweezers here. Just kind of try to get under. It did not work. It kind of worked, but it did not work. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if maybe it needed to stay a little longer. Because as you can see, I'm trying not to touch the vinyl or the transfer because I want to reuse it. Didn't work. We're going to try it again. Because it kind of worked. There's a little bit of the transfer on the tile. Saved the backing. Trying to align it, even if it's just kind of aligned. I said this was a trial and error, right? This is why I do what I do, so that you don't have to. All right, so we are going to use you should not reuse your butcher paper, but it's for the same one. So we're going to reuse it today. We're going to press it for the full 30 seconds this time. Make sure that that's down there hard enough. Give it another 30 seconds. See what happens. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And then you know that you cannot use just plain old ceramic tiles. And then if you can't, I'm curious as to why. Like what's the difference between a Cricut or sublimation ink transfer tile coaster and a ceramic tile? Isn't it the same thing? 
I guess not. I guess not. So I should be able to tell almost immediately if it worked or not. So we're going to go ahead. I think that it's because the ceramic on this is super thick. Um, so we're going to go ahead and press it again. This is not recommended by Cricut. Infusible ink should be pressed once and done. But I am determined to make this work. So we're going to keep pressing until it's done. <laughs> until it transfers. So again, Cricut does not recommend using transfer sheets for more than one press. Reason being is typically it doesn't work. Typically you're going to have a little bit of a mess, but this hasn't moved the entire time. So I'm not overly concerned. There may be some like gases or something like that. That's also a factor, but it's all good. Hmm. It kind of looks like it's getting a little better. So we're going to keep, we're going to do it another time. One of these times it will transfer. I'm determined. You just, so with the crafting world, especially with Cricut and pressing and heat transfer and iron on and regular vinyl, you got to keep trying. You can't give up. You give up and then it's just a shoot from there. So just keep trying. Worst case, you waste a little bit of time and maybe a little bit of product. That's why you always start small. <laughs> don't start with anything massive. If you're testing a new skill set, don't start big. This is not a go big or go home kind of deal. I feel like it's getting a little more on there. I feel it. And I also see a little bit of, do you remember those flakes that we talked about on the other coaster that I missed? Yeah, I missed a few on this one too, but that's okay. Cause I'm going to use glitter around it anyway. <laughs> well, that was my plan was to use some Mod Podge around the, um, the letter and kind of make it glittery around it, make it pretty. Cause you know, all things are better with glitter, right? Right. No arguing. This is the last time I'm going to try it. This will now be five times that this has been pressed. Four times technically because the first time doesn't count because it wasn't even hot. So four. Four times. And we're going to give it a gander. This is not recommended either. Do, 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 do. I can't tell. You know, having one ear face this close to the, <laughs> to the press. And what I was referring to more so <laughs> was lifting the, the decal off or the mask off of the tile before it's cool. So we're just going to let that cool for a second. If it doesn't work, then I'm leaving it walking away. If it does work, I taught you something really cool. Now it's really, really hot, so we definitely need to give it a minute. It was under 400 degrees, so that's what I had my press set at. If you're not sure, that's what you should have it set at for all tiles, all ceramic tiles. It should be at 400. If you're using a sublimation cup, 400. Um, you want it to be super, super, super hot. If you're using infusible ink on a polyester shirt or any other shirt, it is 385, which is recommended. You could do 400, just keep it low. Keep it for a lesser time, not so much of time. All right, let's see where we are at here. So we're going to go ahead. It is pretty cooled off. We are going to lift this. And it kind of worked much better than the first time for sure. Let's see if I can pick this up here without burning my fingers. So it definitely worked a little bit more and it's kind of cool. It's, this is a really light um, infusible ink as well. It kind of looks like watercolor. So you can see here that it's not as vibrant on this as it was before. 
And that's because some of the ink did transfer onto, I'm trying to lift this up without burning my fingers, but also to show you that it is definitely more visible than it was the first time. So if I feel like maybe if I would have pressed a couple more times, it would have been great and it would have transferred properly. But I kind of like this. It's it's like a subtle watercolor look. Let's see if I make it. There we go. Now you can see it. So yes, my friends, you can transfer. You can use infusible ink transfer sheets on ceramic tiles. You just got to have a little patience. <laughs> All right, folks. That's all I got for you today. That's how you transfer infusible ink transfer sheets. Yeah, I botched that, sorry guys. That's how you use infusible ink transfer sheets on a ceramic tile. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell if you wanna know when I'm on or when I post something new and we will see you next time.